Who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals? Who is worthy to grab the reins of history and bring this world order to its appointed end? Who is capable of overturning evil? Who can usher in the kingdom of God upon the earth? We need to present the gospel the way the apostles did. They turned the world upside down. For some reason, the world's turning the church upside down now. Maybe that's why. Maybe we need to stop proclaiming the gospel. What will you do with Jesus? And proclaim it the way the Bible presents it. What will Christ do with you? I'm sorry, my friends, but I am tired of seeing Jesus presented as a weak beggar. He is a powerful Savior, and the Gospel is not a suggestion, it is a command. All have sinned. Why don't we tremble? Why don't we know how terrible this is? We don't know how much we've sinned in the same way a fish doesn't know how wet it is. We were born in sin. We were conceived in sin. We were born in a fallen world of sin. The only thing we've ever known is sin. Our society, as Scripture says, drinks down iniquity like it was water. We also live in a land that is rampant of the ignorance of God. They have no knowledge of God. We don't know who God is. We treat Him as though He were some sort of Santa Claus or a buffoon of a grandfather. And we do not understand that He is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Because in and of myself, all I can do is continue to crumble under the weight of my own blood guiltiness. May I never ever stop realizing the incredible distance between me and my Jesus because that's the only way I appreciate the distance he traveled to make me his child. I need you to wash me. I need you to cleanse me. I need you to purge me. I need you to restore me. I need you to create in me. I need you to make me whole. I need you to love me. I need you to forgive me. I need you to save me. I need you to wash me. I need you. You, God. I serve the great God of the universe who demonstrated his wrath when he poured it out on his own son. And it amazes me that we believe this, that God would crush and kill his own son, but let you slide. Not for a minute. The spotless, sinless lamb of God suffered and bled and died because of the wrath of God. That propitiation the satisfaction of the righteous wrath of God. That's what was experienced on the cross. He has defeated Satan. He has defeated sin. He has overcome hell itself. He has defeated death. He has defeated the grave. He has defeated darkness. He has defeated this world system. He has defeated unbelief. He has defeated demons. He has triumphed over all. And by virtue of his victory at Calvary's cross and his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ alone is qualified to approach the throne and to take this book and to break open its seals and to execute all that the Father has written from eternity past. It reminds me of God's goodness to me. It reminds me of His grace in my life. It reminds me of where I was and where I never want to be again. It reminds me that His work in me may not be complete, but it is effectual. I'm not who I ought to be, but hallelujah, I'm not who I was. And what the book of Revelation is, it is the revealing 
of a single subject, of a single person, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the unveiling of Christ. It is the disclosing of Christ in ways that the previous 65 books have not done. This is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ as He is shown to us in ways that should bring about a shock and awe to our hearts. He is not in the manger. He is no longer in the temple. He is no longer on the cross. He is not in the tomb. Jesus is now risen. He is ascended. He is exalted. He is enthroned and He is ruling and reigning in the heights of heaven. Jesus is no longer the meek Messiah as He once was. He is no longer the humble Galilean. He is no longer the gentle carpenter. Jesus Christ is now the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We do not worship a babe in a manger. We do not bow before a corpse on a cross. We worship Jesus as He now is. And He is in the center of all that is transpiring in heaven. All of the lines are intersecting in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. He is the object of worship of all the saints and of all the angels. And He is seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. And He is the sovereign Savior over heaven and earth. That the Lord Jesus Christ is our sovereign Savior means that He is the Redeemer of all of His people and that He has purchased us with a great price and none of us will ever perish. That He is the sovereign Savior means that He is the Lord of history and the Lord of eternity and that He is the controller of all that comes to pass. I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, the one sitting on it called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. He judges and makes war! His eyes are like a flame of fire, on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He's clothed in a robe dipped in blood. of heaven arrayed in fine linen white and pure were following him on white horses from his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron he will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of the God Almighty on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords that's my Jesus that's the God whom I serve, not the sissified Christ that's preached in pulpits around the United States of America.